All right, now we're gonna go over oral tracheal innovation. So I already have my patient set up as if we were bagging him. So we're going to imagine that my partner is bagging this patient. I wanna make sure that all my equipment is ready. First, I need to select the proper ET tube, which we've gone over in a previous video. I do need to check the balloon at the end of the tube to make sure that there's no holes, tears, leaks, and it inflates well. You're gonna insert your, insert your stylet into the ET tube. You wanna make sure that your stylet does not go past the eye of Murphy because it could come out the side and cause damage to the airway. So once we insert the stylet to a certain depth, we can go ahead and bend that over the top. Some people like to bend their tubes like a hockey puck. I do a little bit, I don't do a very extreme one. I like to just do mine a little bit at the end, a little curve. You also need to make sure that your laryngoscope is ready. I've um, chosen a size four uh, Mac blade for this patient. You wanna make sure it works, that your light is bright and tight, especially if you have a removable bulb at the end. And you wanna make sure the distal tip of your tube is lubricated. So you're gonna use a water soluble lubricant. And then when you're ready to intubate, you're gonna direct your partner to stop bagging. They've been pre-oxygenating your patient the whole time. So you can go ahead and remove the OPA. You wanna tilt their head back and you're gonna insert the laryngoscope. Now this is where a lot of people get in trouble. They try to move the laryngoscope back like this to get a good visualization of the airway. But as you can see, I'm hitting the patient's teeth and we don't wanna hit the patient's teeth with laryngoscope. So what I do is I hold my laryngoscope down here and you wanna push up and out. And I use my forearm here to move the um, patient's, to hold the patient's forehead back. And I can actually stick my finger between this laryngoscope and the patient's teeth, all right? So I just wanted to show you how to correctly place that, place that in the patient. And now we'll go ahead and do this in real time. So I'm gonna tilt the head back, place my laryngoscope. I'm gonna visualize the vocal cords. This curved blade is made to go into the vollecula. And I'm gonna watch my tube pass through the vocal cords and I wanna insert it another one to two centimeters. You don't wanna let go of your tube until you have it secured. I'm gonna inflate my balloon, remove my stylet, and go ahead and ventilate my patient. And as we can see, I have um, good placement with this tube. Of course, this patient's easy to see because I can visualize his lungs. But we do want to check for lung sounds over the apexes and the bases to make sure we have lung sounds on both sides. And we want to listen to the epigastrum to make sure we don't have an esophageal tube placement. If we do place the tube in the esophagus, this will be fatal for the patient. Not only will they get gastric distension, which eventually will cause aspiration, but they're not getting any oxygen to their lungs. I do want to secure this tube just like I did my king. So I'm going to pass my bag off to my partner. I'm still holding onto this tube, as you can see, because I don't want to risk it falling out. Especially if you're doing CPR on the patient, having the Lucas device even will can push this tube outwards. So it's not something that you want to let go of. We're going to use the same commercial tube device, tube holder that we used for our King airway. Make sure the bite block goes between the teeth. Your balloon is out of the way and you're going to tighten down the ET tube. And then you put your strap around the head, never letting go of your tube. And now your tube is secured. Some other ways to confirm tube placement is using waveform capnography. The connector piece would go between your BVM and your ET tube, and it would plug into your monitor just like the nasal cannula capnographer did. Um, we could also look for condensation in the tube when the patient exhales. You want to bag this patient once every six seconds, so make sure you're counting out loud so you're not over bagging and over inflating their lungs.